everyone. Welcome everyone to the Cape Elizabeth Town Council regular meeting number 7-206. It is Monday, April 10. Will the town clerk please call the roll? Chairman Backer. Present. Councilor Dill. Here. Councilor Fritz. Here. Councilor Lynch. Here. Councilor McKenney. Present. Councilor Moles. Here. Councilor Swift Kayata. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we have a few presentations to make. And do we have anyone here from the hockey team? No. Table it. Table it. Table it. <laughs> Would the members of the jazz ensemble please come up here? And if you all would stand right in front of the council so that the folks at home can see you, that would be wonderful. And I have the honor of presenting to you on behalf of the entire council a proclamation that I would like to read. This is titled Cape Elizabeth Town Council Proclamation Concert Jazz Ensemble. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Concert Jazz Ensemble recently was recognized with top honors in Division II at the Maine State Music Festival in Newport, Maine on March 17 and 18, 2006. And whereas the festival is the largest of its kind in Maine and the ensemble was judged against 12 other bands from throughout the state and whereas two of the musicians in the jazz, in the concert jazz ensemble, Jonathan Butterworth, Jonathan, <laughs> and Jeffrey Witherell, Jeffrey, <laughs> were named outstanding musicians. And whereas the talents of all the members of the concert jazz ensemble reflect deep devotion to musical performance and the willingness to spend hundreds of hours practicing, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth Concert Jazz Ensemble, their director, Tom Wazat, and the students' parents on the distinguished performance of the ensemble, and we thank them for representing our community so well and for being such an inspiration to younger, aspiring musicians in Cape Elizabeth. So congratulations to all of you, and thank you. And who would like to accept this proclamation on behalf of the council? John, congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. And thank you. Another one, David, a lot of the same people. Now, those of you who are part of the evening band, if you would come up here, please. Are any of you part of the evening band? Mr. Lazar. Another proclamation titled Cape Elizabeth Town Council Proclamation Wednesday Evening Band. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth Wednesday Evening Band recently was recognized with top honors at the Maine State Music Festival in Newport, Maine on March 17 and 18, 2006. And whereas the festival is the largest of its kind in Maine and the band was judged against seven other bands from throughout the state. And whereas two of the musicians in the Wednesday Evening Band, Luke Carey and Hannah Kramer, were named outstanding musicians. 
And whereas the talents of all of the members of the Wednesday Evening Band reflect deep devotion to musical performance and the willingness to spend hundreds of hours practicing, now therefore be it resolved that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council hereby congratulates the Cape Elizabeth Wednesday Evening Band, their director Tom Lazat, and the students' parents on the distinguished performance of the ensemble and we thank them for representing our community so well and for being such an inspiration to younger aspiring musicians in Cape Elizabeth. Mr. Lazat, thank you. <laughs> and on behalf of the council, thanks. Thank you very much for all the time you've this. Thank you. And we have one other problem. Hockey's not here. This is a, do we have anybody here from hockey? No? No. Well, I'll read the proclamation. This is a proclamation for the boys ice hockey team. Whereas the Cape Elizabeth boys ice hockey team earned the 2006 Maine Class B State Championship, and whereas the championship game was a hard fought match against an excellent team from a community with a great hockey spirit, and the game culminated in not only a state championship, but also in an amazing rebound from a struggling five to six and an 11 to one in the last 12 games for the Cape Elizabeth hockey team. And whereas the victory resulted in the third state title for ice hockey for Cape Elizabeth in four years in a sport that has become increasingly competitive statewide. And whereas this team's 16 and seven season is the culmination of dozens of practices over many years devoted attention to skating techniques, offensive tactics, and defensive maneuvers with the practices at odd hours and with the need for many sacrifices, now therefore be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth boys ice hockey team on the state championship and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, and all others whose efforts helped lead to this victory. And it's great to see so many successes from our youth in Cape Elizabeth. And they do indeed make all of us in Cape Elizabeth proud. So thank you again to all of you. And you are welcome to stay for the rest of our meeting, but we won't think you rude if you decide to leave. So with that, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Reports and correspondence. Anyone? Councilor Lynch. Thank you. Um, I'm serving on the Comprehensive Plan Committee along with Ann Swift Kayata, and we're about halfway through um, drafting the comprehensive plan that we hope will come to this council in December. And there are a number of citizens um, on the committee, and um, we've done a lot of work gathering data on population and the economy. We're starting to look into um, things like housing, recreation, and there were a couple of things I wanted to mention to the council and to the public. First of all, we have a public forum scheduled for June 15th, and I think it's important for uh, the public and the councilors to um, know that you can get online at capeelizabeth.com, read pieces of the comprehensive plan in draft, and know that there is a public forum in June um, where we're hoping we'll have some public comments and we have another public forum for some time around November but I don't think we have set a date. The other thing I wanted to mention was one of the most difficult topics that we've been working on is affordable housing. State law requires that um, we provide that 10% of our housing will be affordable by low-income um, people and Bec just because of the price of real estate in this town, um, the attractiveness of this town, that's a very difficult thing to do, just given the 
the private market forces at work. Um, but that's an area where we've been struggling with it. And one of the things that occurred to me in the last couple of weeks with the Haven Nursing Home um, failing to make payments on its federal loan was that this might be an opportunity um, for some low-income housing. I, I think it's the kind of thing that's difficult to cite um, in this town um, and difficult to get in the density that we need in order to make it affordable. So I wanted to bring it up tonight and just mention it because it strikes me that if we wait for the comprehensive plan to get delivered to us and have the hearing and have it be accepted, maybe another year goes by, and this strikes me as perhaps a once in a decade, two decade, once in a lifetime opportunity to really have a site that might really provide for some low income housing. And I'm not sure how we go about it, but I thought I would mention it tonight and see if there was any interest in having a workshop, bringing in developers. Obviously, we're not the owners of the site. There's only so much we as the town can do, but it stri just strikes me it's such an ideal uh, location for either elderly and or some low income. And, and by low income, what I really mean is workforce housing, housing that's in the 140, 150,000 per unit price range. So um, I don't know where to go from here other than to say I'm really concerned if we don't do anything, we will miss a great opportunity. And I, for one, would love for us to schedule a workshop, even though it's well in advance of the comprehensive plan. Do you have um, some ideas for folks who could present information to us at a workshop yeah, like that? Yeah, we've had, we've had some um, pretty impressive folks come into the comprehensive plan, and perhaps as a starting point, those same folks might be available to come in and talk to us as a council with a particular site in mind. I'd be happy Would the council be interested in something like that? Councilor Dill? Um, the state law that you referred to, there's, I have two questions. One is, um, is the 10% number that you stated a goal? It is a is that, goal. Okay. And is it um, existing housing or new construction? I think it's new construction. Yeah. But we have not been able to meet our goal. We've. We've seen about 300 houses constructed in the last 10 years in Cape Elizabeth, and six have been, well, I won't even say six because some of those are still in the planning stages. Um, but that's about all we've been able to do. Um, and it's not for lack of trying, but when property um, values are as high as they are, and the experts have told us that you really need to get the real estate portion of your housing down to about $15,000 per unit. You can readily understand what the dilemma is in this town. Councilor Fritz. It, it, um, because we already have a 10% requirement for affordable housing within new developments. Yes. And that's not I mean, you have That's to, what has brought us six units out of 300 <clears throat> in the last 10 years. And again, I, you know, I, I think we're doing the kinds of things we need to do, but the haven going into whatever it's into, I'm not sure whether it's a receivership or bankruptcy, just presents, I think, a rather unique opportunity for the town. And just, I'm, I'm thinking that people have appreciated having a nursing home situation for people who are in their families, and mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd want to take that out of the marketplace. That seems an important yeah. thing for people to have, and well, I assume there might be another builder. And, and I guess the question at this stage is, is the council interested enough in discussing this further that um, there would be interest in having a workshop rather than debating the merits of it now? Um, but is, is there enough interest? I think Councilor Swift -Kayata. I'd like to make a comment. Is, affordable housing is definitely um, a, a need in town, as it is statewide, probably even nationwide. But um, since we are talking about a piece of private property, it strikes me that 
before we have a workshop, I, I would want to know uh, sort of what's the status of that property and you, you know what I mean <laughs> before we go planning right. or getting too far ahead of ourselves. I don't know what the property owners or the, the, the new owners, the, the government, the federal government foreclosed, is that correct? I, I don't know what their plans are for the property, if they're just trying to turn it around and sell it to another nursing home owner or not. So I'd at least be, I wouldn't want to be presumptuous, I guess. That's I, and I don't want to be either, but I'm not quite sure what the forum is to even make that sort of investigation, if you will, um, without some discussion here first. I know that the manager was reluctant to go off and do a lot of investigating at, I think, just because one counselor calls and says, hey, we ought to take a look at this. So I brought it up tonight just to see if there's any interest in having some further discussions. But I'm fully cognizant that it's private property, and there's some federal agency that owns the note on it and is, market is in the process of marketing um, the mark mortgage. So it, there's, it's a complex situation, and certainly not something we can discuss at any length tonight. I'm just trying to find out if there's any interest in saying, let's find out what the status is, who owns it, what the future might hold. Would you be willing, Marianne, to work with the town manager to try and do a little factual digging to determine what the status is and whether it might be productive? for us to have a workshop? Just if I might, uh, we, I don't want to preclude her answering that question. No, go ahead. Oh, I, I, yeah, I've spoken, the, the, the property was foreclosed upon by the U.S. Uh, Housing and Urban Development, HUD. Uh, out, they have an office in Manchester. I've also spoken to Bill Burney, uh, some of you may know, former Mayor Rogaster, who is the uh, HUD coordinator in the state of Maine. Uh, he explained that the typical HUD procedure is to to package uh, a number of these foreclosures all at once and to offer them out into the, to more or less the investment market for po folks to buy these mortgages for investments. And w when they do this packaging, you know, it, it really tends to, to preclude, you know, you, you get the, you know, the major investors who, who are looking for affordable housing credits and, you know, those types of things for, for different reasons. I also have spoken to a, a representative of a not-for-profit in Greater Portland who's interested in looking at the property for senior housing. And, uh, you know, it's, the, the, and I gave them the HUD contact. I, I put them, you know, tried to match them up with, with them. And uh, I haven't heard back from e either party uh, since, but uh, have looked into it some. And, the real challenge, if there's any local interest, seems to be the HUD policy to bundle the properties and to offer them out as, as one bid. So then they're likely sold to institutional investors. Yeah. But, so but I don't think it's impossible if there was some will on our part to, to work through the... And, and when we had this conversation difficulty. privately, that's where I said, you know, I'm not, I'm only going this far because I don't know where the council stands and I'm not going to, yeah, that, Which I understand, so I said, okay, that's, Michael. That's where we kind of, uh, I'll bring it re up and reached a dead end and here we are. I, I, I'll offer my opinion. I think that um, the idea of offering affordable housing and senior housing in particular in that type of environment makes a lot of sense. I don't know what kind of legal ramifications it might have, but, uh, I think it's a good idea. I think it's reasonable. It's a realistic thing to look at, for sure. What I guess I'm hoping is that where Michael knows that there's a developer who's interested, okay. that we could get a little more involved or direct the manager to get a little more involved in following up, pursuing it, bird dogging this, however you want to describe it, to make sure that it is at least consistent with the draft comprehensive plan as we're working forward. And we've identified a need for senior housing. Mm -hmm. We've identified a need 
for low-income housing. And yes, Carol, there probably still is a need for a nursing home, but we have no guarantee that it wouldn't be purchased by someone to do some, I don't know, high-income condos too. So I'd just like to see us give the manager a little direction maybe. or, or I, And I'm glad to work on it with him, but we, we went as far as we could go as two people just yammering about this on the phone. <laughs> well, is there enough support to ask Councillor Lynch if she's willing to try and explore the status of the facility a little bit further and report back to us as to whether it might seem productive for us to spend more time talking about it? I support Councillor Lynch exploring this with the manager. Again, I, I think that people have found that as a nursing home to be very handy when they have family um, that needs those kinds of services. And I guess I would just as soon let that play out. I would think since it's set up with the, those facilities, it would be most um, appropriate for another nursing home to be interested in buying. I mean, we're all, our population is getting older and there's more need, so it seems to me. And I guess if we find that that is the likely subsequent use for the facility, we may decide as a council that that's, okay. that we should just let it run its course and let that happen. I have no idea what we'll find when we look at it. I don't, I don't really know anything about the status of it. Um, I guess all we're doing at this point is saying, Councilor Lynch, if you're willing to spend a little more time and report back. Willing to do that. We're willing to listen to whatever you might find. I'd be interested in hearing more about it. I'm, I'm not sure I'd characterize it as support for any definite plan, because there is no definite uh, right. plan. That's right. It's more just gathering information and sort of seeing what's, what's what. And I think that's exactly right. You've, you've characterized it well. I think Michael just felt he couldn't gather any more information until he had a little more sense of the council. Well, without any formal vote, it looks like there's enough of an interest to encourage you to do that yeah, if you're willing. Information. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Lynch. I think that the next step would probably be for Marianne and I to seek a meeting with Bill Burney, uh, who is the, the person, the federal official who's representing uh, the mortgage. Is our most direct contact. Great. Other reports or correspondence? <laughs> Councilor Fritz. I just wanted to remind people about um, the Household Hazardous Waste Collection Day, uh, May. 13th, Saturday. Um, it will have the usual household hazardous waste items, but along with that, the e-waste. Um, and that includes computer monitors and thermometers and TV monitors and fluorescent bulbs and um, thermostats. And I just wanted to make a particular point of, you know, with our energy costs going up, I think people have um, possibly um, exchange thermostats so that they can be regulated um, automatically, turning lower at night and, and higher during the day. And those thermostats um, contain a huge amount of mercury in them. Um, I looked at mine today, I mean, it's from the 70s uh, time period. I'm not sure when they changed over to put, take the mercury out of them, but I mean, there is a huge blob of mercury in those. And if people, um, I, I assume electricians that would make the changeover would be careful and recycle them. But if people are doing it themselves, they should not be thrown in the trash. And also, well, something I think people are finding, um, sa saving of electricity now, are these um, fluorescent bulbs, these curly Q kind of bulbs. and. They may think uh, to just throw them in the trash as normal bulbs, but they are fluorescent and they do have mercury in them, a small amount, but if everybody is changing over to these kind of bulbs, and, that, and that's great, I mean, it, they save energy, they last a lot longer, but there is mercury in them and they should be saved 
along with these other materials for when we do have collection uh, days that the town is providing. And we will have one May 13th, and we're also, as the budget um, we've reviewed, we'll have another one just for e-waste in the fall. So save those items, don't put it in the trash. Thank you for that report. Anybody else? Town manager's report. No report. Approval of the minutes of the town council meeting number 5-2006 held on March 13, so 2006. Moved. Motion to approve, so Councilor moved. Swift Kayata. Second, Councilor Moles. Any comments on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of approval of the minutes? The minutes are approved, seven in favor, none opposed. <clears throat> We are at the point in the agenda where it is time for citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Are there any citizens who would like to discuss anything not on our evening's agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number 77-2006, Ordinance Committee Report on the Mooring Renewal Date. And the chair of our Ordinance Committee is Councilor Fritz. Okay, the uh, ordinance committee met with um, uh, the police chief and the harbor master and, and the manager, and we reviewed um, the changes in the timing uh, of when the mooring permits uh, will be done, and it was changed from June 1st to January 1st. Um, we reviewed the process, and members of the ordinance committee recommended that um, the changes that the harbor master had made were adequate and seemed to be uh, fair and necessary and that uh, we recommend no change to the policy that was developed. Any comments or discussion on the recommendation from the ordinance committee? Is that a motion? Well, there isn't a motion before us. I mean, I think the motion would have to be to change the existing policy, wouldn't it? Or is there something else that I'm missing? But I think that we have an existing policy. Um, there was a suggestion for a, to refer this to the ordinance committee to see whether the policy should be changed. The appropriate motion would be either to acknowledge receipt of the report or any other motion that anyone else would like to make. So made and moved. <laughs> Would anyone like to make a motion to either approve the recommendation of the Ordinance Committee or to make a different motion? Thank you, Mr. Manager. Councilor Dill. I move to approve the recommendation of the Ordinance Committee. Is it to approve or accept? Accept. Or? Whatever the word is. Um, motion by Councilor Dill to accept the recommendation of the Ordinance Committee. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Second, Councilor McKinney. Discussion on the motion. Councilor Mullis. Okay. I want to set it up in the proper framework Thank for you. discussion. Um, I was the one that had originally requested this go out to the Ordinance Committee for review. Uh, the issue at hand was we had historically been collecting our mooring fees uh, around May 1, give or take, and we had been doing this every May 1 to June 1 time frame and then we had switched the time frame to January 1 through this new ordinance and we had had a number of residents and especially the commercial fishermen that had paid in their minds through the following May 1 a four month difference so I had asked the ordinance committee to review whether we might want to change the ordinance or reimburse the commercial fishermen for those four months that they felt they were head overpaid um, However, uh, since we're, in my mind, still trying to resolve this issue, uh, at this point, I would actually like to make a motion that we table this item until next month and decide whether we accept the report of the Ordinance Committee and uh, further discuss it or make another motion. And the purpose of tabling would be what? 
what would transpire between now and next month? There's no second. Well, to... To try and work Council, things out administratively. help you with this one? To try and work things out administratively. There you go. <laughs> Do we have a second on the motion to table? I'll second it. All those in favor of the motion to table? Opposed? The motion is approved. Six in favor. Councilor Dill opposed. And it is tabled until next month. Next item on our agenda is 78-2006, Ordinance Committee Report, Winnick Woods. Councilor Fritz. Um, oh well. Uh, the ordinance committee met um, with, well, let me start out that um, in the Winnick Woods master plan, the proposal is to have an area of the, uh, the property set aside 12 acres for um, uh, for habitat for the New England cockatiel. And so the Ordinance Committee met with, although it doesn't have anything to do with ordinances, it was tasked to us. Um, <laughs> the, we met with people from Rachel Carson and from people in Maine and New Hampshire who know about this sort of... Um, do you have... Funny. The, yeah. <laughs> The cotton tail, uh, I the, think the I habitat. do. And we have a proposal from Somewhere. Uh, Rachel Carson to include us. I have it here. Did you <laughs> no. get it? Um, to include us in a $20,000 grant along with some other properties um, to evaluate and, uh, this property to see whether it actually is adequate for the New England Cottontail, and to do a survey of the vegetation um, and write a management plan for us in a draft form, and then it would come back to us um, to see if we want to approve it. Um, so the letter that you have in your packet is the proposal, and um, we are recommending that, that you approve this. David, can I, can I just add that the issue that we discussed at some length was um, a lot of dog walkers use our trails. And what would happen if the New England cottontail were um, determined to be an endangered species? And the interesting thing is that there are agreements that you can enter into with um, the federal agency that governs endangered species, which provide um, I guess I'd call it a safe harbor, if you will, such that if you enter into the agreement before the species is determined to be endangered, but you agree to do what you can to protect the species, certain activities that you might engage in would always be OK. For instance, um, we agree to protect the cottontail bunny rabbit habitat, and the federal agency agrees that dog walking through that area is never going to be a problem. And we had a very useful and productive discussion about the kinds of activities that we anticipated would take place on that land, most particularly dog walking. And um, all of the people from there were, uh, I haven't seen that many people from federal agencies in one place since I worked in Augusta lobbying. It was a, quite a bunch of them, but they all, um, I think, were quite excited about the possibility of trying to protect this habitat. And at the same time, I think we're very understanding that we want to make sure that people can continue to walk through the property and use it for dog walking. So um, I think it was very fruitful. Um, they felt that since the cottontail bunny rabbit has 
much more dangerous predators than your neighborhood dog um, that really was not going to be an issue. And I think they gave us every indication that um, they would carve out that kind of activity. And as we move along in this, I think if we were to think of other activities that we want to carve out for safe harbor, I suspect they would be likewise amenable. So it really was as great a win-win situation as I've ever seen in these um, kinds of discussions. Would someone like to make a motion? I'd like to move that we grant permission um, to the Rachel Carson National Wildlife Refuge staff to assess uh, this property for suitability as cottontail habitat. And Second. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you to Councilors Fritz, Lynch, and Dill as members of the Ordinance Committee for working on this. You're welcome. Item number 79-2006, approval of the 2006 Municipal Dog Warrant. And we have been presented tonight with the list of aberrant dogs. Not the owner. The aberrant. They aberrant. <laughs> <laughs> Not the dogs. <laughs> I shouldn't impugn the integrity of the dogs. You're right. It's the owners. Would uh, someone like to make a motion on the municipal dog warrant? I'll move that the town council sign the 206 municipal warrant for prosecuting unlicensed dog owner keepers as presented. I'll second that. Uh, motion by Councilor Fritz, second by Councilor Lynch. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion is approved. Six in favor. Councilor Moles. Opposed? <clears throat> Next item. 80-2006, approval of the June 13, 2006 election warrant. Would someone like I to make a motion? move approval of the election warrant as more fully set out in our package. Second. Motion. For June 13, 2006. Yes, I'm sorry. That was June. more fully set out in our package. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, motion. Yeah by Councilor Lynch, second by Councilor McKinney. Uh, discussion on the motion. All those in favor? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Item number 81-2006, approval of warden for June 13, 2006 election. I'll move that we reappoint Sherry Ga Sharon Gower as the warden for the June 13th, 2006 election. Second. And um, that we appoint Deborah Cabana as the deputy warden. Second. Motion, Councilor Fritz, second by Councilor Moles. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Uh, next, item number 82-2006, approval of election clerks through May 1, 2008. I'd like to move that we uh, that the town council appoint the list of election clerks as presented more fully in our package. Second. Motion, Councilor Swift Kayata. Second, Councilor Moles. Discussion. Do we Although, need that their appointments are through March, May 1, 2008? I'll accept that as a friendly amendment. Likewise. The. Amendment is accepted. All those in favor of the motion as amended? Seven in favor, none opposed. Motion passes. Item number 83-2006, Eco Main Board Appointments. Would someone like to make a motion? Councilor Swift Kayata? Well, Councilor Fritz. Um, these appointments have already been approved. Um, so we might, I mean, I don't mind having the vote again, but 
I was elected to the Eco Board on the re we could refer to the minutes of July 11th, yeah. and and uh, Manager McGovern was appointed on October 19th. Yeah, I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, I, I was aware of that, but they specifically asked for this to be for a term of three years or until his or her successor is appointed, and the original appointments were for a one-year term. So this provides for a three-year term until this is a successor appointed. That, that's why I put it on the agenda instead of just signing it. I'd like to make a excuse me, I'm sorry. I'd like to move that we reaffirm the designation of um, Carol Fritz and Michael McGovern as Cape Elizabeth's two representatives to the Eco Maine Board of Directors. Second. For the term as just stated. For a term of three years. Yes. I just have a question. If someone is no longer on the council, do they continue to serve on the Eco Main board because that is a representing the town seat? My understanding is that the motion is until his or her successor is chosen. So that leaves it up to the council at any given point to replace either of the two people elected this evening at any okay. time. Okay. Thank you. We had a motion, Councillor Swift Kayata. Was there a second? Councilor Moles, second. Mm -hmm. Discussion on the motion? Councilor Moles. I would like to say that Carol Fritz does an excellent job with Eco Main, uh, as well as uh, the support that Mike McGovern gives him as well. That's all. Other comments? Discussion? <laughs> all those in favor? Motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you to Councilor Fritz and to our town manager for being willing to spend the time on this. It's, it is a lot of time, and it's much appreciated, so thank you. 84-2006, request for approval of reorganization of Southern Maine Economic Development District. Would our manager like to explain yeah, what this is? We gave you a lot of paper. Mine has a lot more paper than we needed. <laughs> Uh, this would happen two-sided to one-sided sometimes. Uh, anyway, the, uh, under federal law, the U.S. Uh, EDA, the Economic, Economic Development Administration, certain areas are set aside as economic development districts. Back quite a few years ago, the, the uh, Council of Go Greater Portland Council of Governments and the Southern Maine Regional Planning Commission decided to form a single economic development district by the name of SMED, the Southern Maine Economic Development District. They, they, they really, the, both the agencies act independently of each other, COG, and Southern Maine Regional Planning Commission, and it was just more meetings, more, uh, you know, problems with coordination. So they've, they've decided with the governor's support, with the encouragement of the feds, and with, as near as we know, everyone's support, to, to go their separate way, to have the Greater Portland Council of Governments look at all of the Cumberland County communities, with the exception of Hopswell and Brunswick, who are in yet another one, and for the York County communities to participate in the, along with the Southern Maine Regional Planning Commission. There's a letter uh, that they're asking us to send uh, saying that we support the proposed restructuring that the town of Cape Elizabeth does, and we're asking uh, this evening for you to uh, authorize the sending of that letter indicating that you support the designation of COG and SMRPC as separate economic development districts. Thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion? I move that we, re we support the request for approval of reorganization of the Southern Maine Economic Development District. Second. Motion, Councilor McKinney, a second, Councilor Fritz. Thank you. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. 85-2006, County Community Development Block Grant Application. If I might, this was approved through Councillor McKenney's leadership at your February 13th meeting and uh, by a six to one vote. I think, I don't know why I wasn't here that night, Carol, for whatever reason wasn't for it. <laughs> but anyway, this is just the, they want the, the legalese language for you to formally adopt so we can send it in that said you adopt the formal language. I move that we um, support the county community development block grant authorization as restated. Second. 
Discussion on the motion? I just have a question. The, um, the block grant authorization, as restated, was a document that was handed to us at a previous meeting. Is that correct? It was emailed to you on Friday, I think. Okay. It's, it, okay. Yeah. Frank O'Hara was involved. That rings a bell with anyone. Basically, they just needed particular language, or were looking for particular language to, uh, when they do their submission. Other comments? Questions? All those in favor? Motion is approved. Six in favor. I'm sorry, one opposed. <laughs> Councilor Fritz, thank you. Councilor Fritz opposed. Item number 86-2006, proposal for working group on, on Fort Williams pay display system. Uh, At, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, <laughs> I, I, I insist. So this evening, you have, a, you have a sheet in front of you that lays out the possibility of setting up a working group to look at a pay display system. One of the town council goals this year is for you to vote after a public hearing as a council on a specific proposal or proposals to generate revenue at Fort Williams Park. This is in keeping with the, the goal of pay display system, all the there's materials that are attached here that explain it. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, group, group meter that you, you either put money into, cash, coin, or credit card. It punches out a little ticket that you can put on your dashboard or some systems. You can, there's a little sticky that you can put on your window, and it entitles you to park until a certain time. The purpose of the working group would be to work out the details of this and uh, make a recommendation back to the council. In the draft that's before you, it, it provides that the working group would consist of eight members, th uh, three members appointed by the chair of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, uh, three council members to be appointed by Chairman Backer, and two members of the public to be appointed by the chairman. Uh, the committee would report back uh, on June 5th, uh, 2006, in time for the, the June council meeting. And, uh, you know, beyond that, I'm forgetting one little paragraph there. Oh, that they, that they shall gather public input during their process. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? The motion is approved. Six in favor. Councilor Fritz opposed. Are there members of the council who would like to serve on this? This is a committee that we would envision being a very short duration, um, asking that the group report back to the council no later than June 5. Councilor Moles? I would be happy to volunteer my services in that group. Anyone else, Councilor Lynch? <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to volunteer my <laughs> services. I know that you have it's my steadfastly <laughs> um, been a proponent of some sort of a pay per use system at the fort. And I would hate to see the discussion come and go without your continued <laughs> participation at this point, if you'd be willing. This is the point where it's. Nice to know. <laughs> but I I'd realize that you are serving on the Comprehensive Plan Committee. We've asked you to look into the issue of Haven Health Care, and you undoubtedly have other things going on in your life. But if you can squeeze time for this in before June 5, that would be great. I can. Thank you. Think Anybody I'd else who would like to do this? Councilor Swift Kayata, thank you. I'd be you. happy to join the crew. Great. Well, we have our council representatives then. Councilor Swift Kayata, Councilor Moles. And uh, Councilor Lynch, thank you. And we will um, appoint two citizen members as well. The port committee is going to be meeting this week, and we'll know by the end of the week. Great. Thank you. Councilor Malls. I do want to make it clear for those people that are listening at home that by my serving on this committee doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to vote to approve fees at the park. But I do want to participate in the discussion of if we do go with fees at the park, what type of system is the best type of system to go with? Thank you. And um, if I could add, um, these meetings, I'm sure, will be open to the public. So if there are any other 
counselors or members of the public that want to attend. I'm sure they'd be more than welcome. Just so people know. Great. Thank you. Item number 87-2006, proposal for traffic calming slash road safety working group. This came out of an ordinance committee discussion on Friday, was it? Yes. Right. Maureen drafted it. Right. Well, um, last month we ad adopted an emergency ordinance um, that gives the planning board the ability to use tra um, traffic calming methods that we outlined uh, for 90 days. And then you sent this to the ordinance committee to do something with. And we decided that we did not uh, want to develop an ordinance right away based on that, or an ordinance amendment, but that we wanted to create a working group since that is one of our goals, or the council goals, to look at traffic calming. Um, so we are proposing, recommending, um, and again, Councillor Lynch and Councillor Dill, as the ordinance committee to set up a working group uh, and we're proposing two consulars and uh, various other members and this would be uh, these would be appointed by the chair again um, to look at and gather citizen and professional uh, opinion uh, as to the advisability of traffic calming measures for the roads in Cape Elizabeth and recommend any initial implementing steps and report back up by October 1st. I just thought we should mention the other um, members of the group. Um, we thought that the um, two councillors should be appointed by the council chair. There should be a representative of the ad hoc bike pedestrian um, group that's been formed locally, a developer who hopefully has no local projects pending, the town manager, the public works director, the police chief, and the town planner. And that would round out the group. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have a motion on this recommendation from the Ordinance Committee? So move. Second. Motion, Councillor Moles. Second, Councillor Dill. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Do we have counselors that have an interest in serving on this committee? Councilor Dill and Councilor Fritz. Perfect. Thank you to both of you. And um, we'll see if we can find a developer and someone to represent the bike pedestrian group. Citizens items, we adjourn. We are once again at the time for citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Seeing none, do we have a motion to adjourn. adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? I haven't voted against anything all night now. <laughs> Opposed? Just kidding. <laughs> we are adjourned.